Logos, National System of Public Lands, U.S. Department of the Interior, Bureau of Land Management, Alaska Fire Service, Text, China Hotshots, Gear for a Fire Assignment. So I'm Richard Waltz with China Hotshots out of Alaska Fire Service, and here we have our traditional gear lineup. Everything here is set for 24 hours of working period and we are IA ready. So what that includes is every personnel has a red bag and we are weight limited to 30 pounds for the red bags. And in the red bags, you have to be set for 14 to 21 days of work. And that entails enough socks, underwear, and then everyone has a tent in there and an extra pair of green Nomex pants and a yellow Nomex shirt. And then just being up in AK, things are wet, so you gotta have a good amount of baking soda for your feet or foot powder to dry things out during the evening. And then me personally, since we're up in AK, and the family likes to know where I'm at. I keep a little garment in there so I could text them and show them where I'm at. And then outside we have our line gear and every person on the crew has a different role they have to do. And so that means they are carrying uh, various amounts of equipment to supply the crew so we don't have to rely on getting supply from the cache as we're out in the middle of nowhere, hours away usually from the nearest civilization. Um, so we have a fittings guy, um, we have people carrying water bags. So when we do have water, which is water's readily available in AK, we can easily get have that, fill it up and cool down a hot area for the people cutting or just cool down while we're mopping up. And then on top of that, we have weather kits so we can get accurate re weather readings every hour on the hour for the crew so we know if there's any watch out situations going on and if, if things are changing. Um, and then also have to carry two MREs in our line gear, which are wonderful. And just so we're ready to go for 24 hours and if we're doing initial attack. And then on, on top of that, there's usually, we carry our personal supplies like anti-itch cream and various other things that make you feel better throughout the working shift to get you through it. Um, Boxes. And then to get us through the 24 hour working shift, we carry 10 QBs and eight MREs to supply the crew with um, water and food throughout the operational period. And then being up in AK, everything is, we're either flying with a fixed wing or taking helicopters. So we have to keep everything bundled up and ready to go versus a down south crew where everything's tied up in the buggies. When we're flying out, we have four North Face duffel bags and each one is to supply the crew throughout the, the working role. And so we have a saw bag filled with saw parts so we could basically reconstruct the saw on the line and not have to call in supplies from the cache. And also has extra chaps in case we're running a fifth saw team as we normally run four salt teams, uh, two for each squad. And then we have a solar bag, which is filled with a solar panel and all the accoutrements to charge our batteries and other equipment. Given that in AK, we have sun basically 24 hours a day. And then we don't have to be packing around a extraneous amount of batteries and other uh, perishables to keep the crew running 
Um, and then we have a camp bag, which is different than down south because we're basically spiked out all of the time. So we have a giant yellow tarp that covers where the fire pit is and that's where the crew eats and hangs out um, during, uh, before we go out to work and when we come back in the evening for dinner. And then there's, that's where all of our resupply is for flagging, uh, fiber tape, gloves, um, items that the crew needs to stay functional as well. Um, and then we have the Harvey's bag, which is, it's a bag that we pack two days worth of food, um, just so we're not eating MREs um, every night and every meal. Because uh, in Alaska, the third day is when we get fresh food box sent in. So the Harvey's bag is there to give us some fresh food and a relief from the MREs until we get our fresh food boxes. And then once we get the fresh food boxes, then we could resupply the Harvey's bag and start making some better meals. And the final uh, pieces of equipment that we carry um, is we have a med bag and a TRS sked and a trauma boat. And given that we are so far away from medical resources, we are self-sufficient. And if something happened while we're on the line, we it's gonna take hours, maybe even days to get us evacuated out. So we have a accoutrement of medical supplies to stabilize a patient and make them feel comfortable as we wait for the uh, evacuation. Now we'll transfer over to the tools and being in Alaska, um, there's a tundra mat everywhere. So that means we have sharp Pulaski's to cut out and dig line and trench out stuff. And then we also carry uh, flappers once you get into the tundra to smother out the flames and be quick because those fires can move pretty quick and you want to be quick to flank them and get their head and capture, capture them. Each crew in Alaska runs with four salt teams. And so that entails that we have four saws and then we bring up a fifth saw just in case one goes down. And on the firing side, we carry four drip torches and a five gallon of drip torch fuel if we do any bur burning up here. And then on top of that, we have two ammo cans filled with hot shots and stubbies. And then we have a very pistol so we can do some interior burning and start get, generating some heat um, as the guys and gals on the line are bringing down the drip torches to um, get a nice solid black line. And then we carry 10 gallons of two-stroke mix and two cases of bar oil. So if the chainsaws are ripping, and burning a lot of fuel will be sufficient and can keep cutting line. And that's that's all we bring out. It's it's a lot of gear, but it gets us through the working shifts. Yeah, up in Alaska, we don't have ICPs like down south where they have their own supply units. So the nearest supply unit for us is the, the cash at AFS. And usually that could take like a fixed wing flight, then a helicopter flight to swing load it to where we're at. And more often than not, the only personnel we're working with are smoke jumpers that might have flown out there and dropped in for the, the initial attack. And yeah, uh, a lot of times we're the only, only crew on the fire too. So um, it takes a lot of effort in Alaska to get supplies to us. But that's also probably the draw for a lot of people too. It is, it is. So it's it's definitely a type B type of fun up here. The mosquitoes are bad. You're wet all the time, but um, the crew, the commodity that comes with everyone um, and living through it is definitely humbling and draws a lot of people up here. Text 
Video by BLM Alaska Fire Service, Public Affairs Office, 2021. Logo, Alaska Fire Service.